this is one of the most iconic and well-known images of Roman Vizniak he went on his book, uh, A Vanished World. Uh, what does the image mean and what does, and what does the book mean? Uh, they have a global significance, but they're also very particular. Yeah, so he's from uh, Vishni Apsa, which is in um, Carpathian Ruthenia, which is sort of Ukraine today and was um, divided up between various new countries after World War I. Uh, and it's iconic because, um, I mean, the portraiture is just perfect, the way it's sort of centered and the way he's both leaning the hand on the cane and his head in his hands in sort of this deep thoughtful pose and he's a you know he's an elder of this he's an elder of this community um and so you know it signifies of course this community itself for Vishniak. Vishniak represented the, this you know this part of the community is sort of deeply religious and deeply pious uh, Roman Vizhnik, once he arrives in the United States, sets up the studio and does studio photography or travels to Princeton to, uh, to take portraits of Albert Einstein, uh, who apparently stated that his portrait by, portraits by Vizhnik were among his favorites. Um, it's a different type of both Jewish, American and global iconography here, right? Right. But there's two things. They're both, at this particular point, relatively elderly Jewish men from different parts of Europe, very clearly, but both learned in their own way. They're both deep in thought. And so there are, you wouldn't expect someone from this, you know, this village elder, essentially, of the small town elder from the shtetl and Einstein to have much in common, but the way Vishniak has portrayed them I think one can say that they actually do have something in common. And, of course, we know that both of their worlds came to, to an end. Yes. And I remember when I exhibited these images, I, in fact, put them one next to the other for yeah. the very same reason. Roman Vizhniak takes many, many photographs of storks. It's uh, something that could be surprising. But if we relate this to materials in the Vizhniak archives, things he wrote, we see that uh, there is not only a poetry in, in how he describes uh, um, a, a, a living animal, uh, but there is really a humanist gaze on science that we'll also see reflected in a more scientific taxonomic gaze on human beings. So he's a man of the two cultures combined, science and humanities. He writes about the stork that the wings of the planing bird are the prototype of our aeroplane wings. Gliding and sailing birds were the models for inventors. And he talks about the struggle of the flight of the stork in details in his notes. And these notes are in his archives, typewritten at the same time with the same setting, type setting as reflections on uh, Paris, the city of Paris, being looked at from the point of view, from the eyes of a gargoyle in Notre Dame, uh, as well as reflection on the toils of, uh, of the European Jews. He writes about Jews in the same way that he writes about Stork and their, and their struggle in flight. Uh, and he writes, four million human beings driven to despair by humiliation, suffering, and destitution, hope to be saved, if not for themselves, then for their children, that they may grow up to live and work in a better world. He doesn't express any knowledge of the systematic extermination of European Jewry, but needless to say, he's fully aware of the systematic persecution of European Jewry. So we're at a point yet where, for him personally, uh, that knowledge is not there, and then there's still sort of a glimmer of hope, and perhaps, you know, tied to the glimmer of hope you know, with the, with, the, with the picture of the stork, that the stork will still be able to make its ascent and remain in the air. So he still sees a possibility at this particular point and doesn't realize that there is none. A man of the two cultures combined, science and humanistic, scientific and humanistic gaze all at once. Uh, Roman Vizhniak was a pioneer in microscopic photography. The Vizhniak collection now at the Magnus includes around 1,500 prints plus negatives and other materials and his own reflections about animals and uh, also 
microscopic objects, which are photographed in stark contrast with these black and white photos in color, and that we hope will unleash numerous paths of research on the UC Berkeley campus. Many of his photographs depict children. He devoted a whole book to Jewish children, but he photographs children in many communities in many ways, and especially children who are also readers, kind of like his photographs of Eastern Europe and Jewish children in the Heder. What's a Heder, John? Uh, like a sort of a religious elementary school. But almost, I mean, there's a, I mean, a disproportionate representation of Jews reading. Both children and adults, and even the picture of Einstein is reading. So Jews as sort of a reading civilization is the way he, he wished to portray them. Um, and irrespective of what country they're in or where they're from, whether they're from Germany like Einstein or whether they're from you know, Carpathian Ruthenia or whether they're now in America reading what looks like an English language book, they're nonetheless reading. In New York, just as it did in Europe, Vizniak turns his gaze to immigrant communities. Um, this is just a short set of many uh, negatives and prints uh, of work that he did in Chinatown, New York City, in 1940. Um, they're among the first um, external documents of visual documents of Chinatown at the time, and they show both the breadth of his interests, but also uh, the, the depth in which he's able to pursue the focus of um, documenting marginalized people around the world. Roman Vizniak traveled to Israel several times. Uh, what we're looking at here are slides of a trip uh, done in October, November of 1967, shortly after the Six Day War. We have no prints in the archive, but we have many, many uh, transparencies, many, many slides. Um, he gives a wide ranging, uh, even in just this few uh, uh, images, a one ranging, wide ranging portrait of Israel and especially Jerusalem, the old city which had, ju had just been acquired, reacquired for access to Jews after the Six Day War. And, and also there, there is again the, the topic of uh, old elderly Jewish, or in this case even Samaritan men with, uh, with ritual texts and, and, uh, and bearded elderly men. Uh, and also one of the things that's most noticeable is that he's known, of course, for these stunning and striking black and white photos, and these are in color. So it sort of represents a dawn, as it were, a brightness of a possible future, as opposed to the recording, the sort of the visual recording of photographs of a civilization that's on the brink. This is a civilization on the brink of a new future. And so these seem to be, you know, these are in color. And so they're also very striking. But there are these very intimate portraits, again, of both Jews and non-Jews. And self-portraits as well. And self-portraits. <laughs> so we see him in, in action, roaming the, the, the roads of, of Israel. What's interesting and very important about these images is that there is no real public documentation of Vizniak in Israel. So it just this gives us a sense of the potentiality of this archive and how many more roads we need to take in order to document the extraordinary work of this photographer.